Today I'm going for a meta video. A video about what makes for a good video. I got my free ride laid out on the ground. I usually choose it when I need some speed. I'm loving that free ride. I, I keep reaching for it. That and my Zenus. Uh, if you're the right pilot, it might be the right wing. I don't sell them, but I like it. Anyway, I'll see you in the sky. Let's talk about what I think makes for a good video. First of all, every video or every social media, media interaction, whether it be Twitter or Instagram or whatever, should do one or more of three things. You need to be able to connect, right? Like sort of connect on a human level with your audience, educate or entertain, right? So before you say or do anything, ask yourself if you're doing one of those things. Are you connecting, educating or entertaining? Different people are going to prefer different things on that. I've had people say like, oh my god, Woody, your videos are just filled with blabbering. Okay, I get that, I get that, I, I see where you're coming from. That's the kind of video I like. Which, on a related topic, make the kind of video you like. If you make a video copying someone who's very successful, then you look like a cheap copy of him. Instead, you'll make good videos if you make the kind of videos you like. But back on topic. I watch Tucker Gott, right? I, I watch every Tucker Gott video he's like ever made, even the seven year old ones. And some of my favorite moments in Tucker videos are not even about paramotoring. Like one of the things I've got in my head right now, I remember he and Jacqueline climbed up a really tough mountain. Like the, every time you stepped on a rock, that rock wanted to fall down the hill. It was like slippery shale. And in spite of the fact that they're both young and fit, the mountain was, you know, kind of kicking their butt. And that sincerity meant so much to me. Mark Honeycutt did a recent one too, where I think he flew off Pinnacle. Five minute sled ride, right? The flying part of the video wasn't really, there wasn't a lot to it. But watching him climb back up the mountain and share like the sincerity of that struggle, that made it a good video to me. Uh, watching the struggle, watching the reality, uh, understanding somebody's fright level, uh, that kind of stuff to me, like that connection is my favorite part of a video. Like that, I like that a lot. And I'm gonna get some altitude and we'll talk about the others. All right, so that was connection. Let's talk about education. Uh, this is another reason people watch videos. They wanna know something new, they wanna learn something. It's an area lately where Kyle O'Glee has just been killing the game. Uh, Kyle O'Glee, like I'll speak from my own perspective. There's two areas in particular where Kyle is light years ahead of me and they are weather and wisdom. So lately he's been doing a lot of weather stuff, explaining how to find thermals. I stink at finding thermals. I'm excited if I can connect two together and he's done a hundred mile flight. And he just shows like what he looks for, what good clouds look like, what bad clouds look like, what good weather looks like. I didn't know that you needed wind to kick off thermals. I would have thought that just happened. I I've got so much to learn and he's been killing it on the education game. Kyle's also good at the connection game too. Uh, production quality. <laughs> Anthony Vela comes into my head when I see that. Aviator PPG does this too. But Anthony Vela, I have had a video I need to make. It's like what I look for in a paramotor and specifically I was going to show the Nitro, the Tornado, the Scout. I've also owned a Fresh Breeze and flown a few more and I'm just going to talk about like what a paramotor does and what matters to make one good or bad. A little bumpy. And uh, Anthony Vela's production quality is so good. That freaking young, good-looking piece of human filth with high production quality makes me not want to stand my chubby ass in front of a tripod and talk about paramotors. I'm just like, this video is not good enough. I, <laughs> so throw your rotten tomatoes in him if that's a video you've been looking forward toward, like how the tomato, that a tornado is working. Because production quality, it counts. But in my opinion, if you have two out of the three, you can make pretty good videos. Like, it, it, Tucker fires on all cylinders. You know, sometimes he educates, sometimes he entertains, and he almost always connects. But if you do two out of three, 
right? If your production quality is so-so, but you're educational and, and I like I like you, right? Like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, I like Elena. I wonder what Elena's up to now. Hey, look, she made a video. Let's see what she did, right? Uh, if you just hit two out of three, then I think you can make pretty good videos. And if you hit all three, then, you know, you could get a million subs like Tucker will have soon. That's my take on, on what it takes to make a good video. You connect, you educate, and you entertain. Those are the things. Now, different people are going to like different videos. Uh, if I see a video with amazing production quality and, you know, they're, they're dancing underneath the drone and such, for me, like, I really, really value sincerity in a video. I, I talked about the struggles of climbing up a hill or, or maybe somebody's blown launch or they talk about the heat or something like that. If, uh, if I see, like, what is this, you know, as a video maker, I see, like, oh, this is clearly a staged scene for the camera so they could include it in the video. Uh, then that's not my cup of tea. But I've had people give me feedback like, Woody, enough of the blabbering. Show me the pretty pictures. So different people are going to value different things in videos. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, so this is the, uh, the turbulent zone. Different people are going to value different things in videos. So you can decide you know, what matters to you and, and pick your favorite YouTubers based on that. Um, well, I didn't do this intentionally. I think that when YouTubers collab together and kind of help each other, it builds everything, right? Like if, if Kyle shows up in a Woody video, then people who like my stuff might discover him. Or if Woody shows up in a Kyle video, then the opposite can happen. It, it raises everyone involved. Uh, I, I, I've been in this game for a while and I can tell you that sometimes it's a temptation to like hoard your subscribers and be like, oh man, if they discover Kyle, they'll stop watching me. But uh, that's actually the wrong attitude. It, it grows the whole world when people work together. I've seen it in the gaming world. I, like I was involved with that uh, at the beginning and uh, just everybody does better when people work together and kind of collab and, and help each other out. So that eh, is just something to note. All right. So that's most of what I can think of in terms of like how to make good videos and how to grow a channel. So if that's something that interests you guys out there, then uh, that's my advice for you. Do a little sat here, fun times. It's a little bumpy for this kind of stuff, but uh, I do a lot of this. Little barrel roll, not the most vertical, but whatevs. Do one more turn and then we'll start carving it out. Kill the energy. Just gonna point it over a safe place to land <laughs> while I restart the motor. Cause you never know. Things happen. Alright, so I got kind of a situation here. <laughs> um, well, the camera was off, the belt started slipping on the back, which is dangerous. Uh, I'll turn that off. Well, the belt slips, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's practically a motor out, right? So it seems to be working now, but it's not working as well as I wish it would. So what I did is I gained some altitude and started headed home. But the problem is, at altitude up here, the winds are high and they're in the wrong direction. So you can see the smoke on the ground. I, I don't know how well the you know, action cameras are terrible at distance, but it's going that way, right towards my house, which would be great. But up here, it's I'm headed right into the wind. And I was actually going backwards. I might still be going backwards. All right. The motor did the thing again when I started. So it's definitely not just a figment of my imagination. I think it's the belt slipping. We'll see what's up. All right, so that's my house ahead. The motor did whatever it's doing, like this stutter slip thing, about five more times, so it's real. Am 
might be the clutch. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But uh, I started gliding, and at first I was just going straight down. Future Woody here. So I managed to get back to the house, and at this point, my stress level is over. I was really just worried I wouldn't make it back to my preferred LZ. I have to land in some random place. I do this thing pretty much every flight where once I know that I can you know, glide it in, I whatever, do my little twirly do's like you're watching. And then I try to glide it into a spot landing. So the motor's running, which to me is like a risk thing. I leave it on just in case I need it, just in case you know something doesn't go as planned. But the contract I have with myself is not to touch the throttle. I try to get all the way back without touching the throttle so that I can practice my spot landings. And that's what's going on right here. Come right in between these two houses. I might still be a little high trying to figure this out. No, it's okay, because I got the headwind. Bouncy, 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 just to psych out the pilot. There we go. Pretty much a spot landing <laughs> on the bag. Landed safely, all the big stuff is fine. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but check this out. The problem is somewhere in fuel delivery. Uh, we got like gas sort of spraying all over. I see one of my tethers on the um, air box went bad, and there's just fuel where it doesn't belong. So I think it's gonna be a matter of just tightening it down and making it sealed. That Perhaps there's maintenance I should have done better. I don't know. But that's where we are. All right, well, outro time. I hope you guys like the video. I hope, uh, I don't know, I like making it. You know what? I just happen to be going to Aviator PPG next week. I might just pack it up, drive it to Kyle, and let a pro deal with it. They've got, uh, the service at Aviator is, is as good as it gets. So I might just lean on that. We'll see. Anyway, have a good day. Future Woody here. So if I was a listener, I'd want to know how this story ends. Here you go. I went down to Aviator PPG. I gave it to Kyle. Kyle loved up the carburetor, stopped the fuel delivery from like spraying and such, but that didn't fix it. I swapped out the spark plug and the symptoms all went away. So the spark plug, to my eye, it looked a little rich, but I think I like it a little bit rich. I feel like it's kind to the motor. It was just getting old. I think the spark plug maybe had 30 hours on it and it was time to swap it. And as soon as I swapped it, she started running perfectly again. So there it is, old spark plug uh, made for a nervous flight.